All right, college algebra kids, here we are on day seven, the last day of chapter one. Um, we're solving inequalities. We only got two kinds to solve today. Later on in the class, we'll solve more, but today it's all about linear and absolute values, so let's get going. Um, first things first, let's talk about linear. Uh, just like solving an equation, except for one difference. What if I multiply by a negative? What if I divide by a negative? Hopefully you remember that when I do either of those two things, I have to uh, flip my sign, right? So if I have a basic linear inequality, like 3x plus 5 greater than or equal to 7x minus 12, okay, just make one up. I solve it just like I would a linear equation, except for if I multiply or divide by negative, I gotta remember that. So I mentioned before in one of the videos, I am a left-sider, which means I gotta have my variable on the left. So here we go, I'm gonna move that. 7x over here. Because they're completely independent of each other, I can do two steps at once and apparently not touch the board while teaching. Maybe I have the force after all. Anyway, so I'm going to move the 5 over here at the same time. So that's gone here, that's gone here. 3x minus 7x is negative 4x greater than or equal to negative 12 minus 5 is negative 17. Okay? Here's where that comes into play. If I'm dividing by a negative, I have to remember that I flip my inequality symbol. It's no longer greater than, it's now less than, or equal to. Negative divided by negative to positive, 17 fourths is four and one fourth. That's four times four is 16 with one left over. Okay, one other thing on the number line, a lot of times, read your direction. You might have to graph it on the number line. How do I graph a fraction on a number line? Well, you put it about a fourth of the way between four and five, right? Not put too fine a point on it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? When you make your number line critical, everybody knows where zero is. It's kind of our focal point, so make sure you have zero on there. And then make sure you have your point of interest on there, or points if we're doing like a compound inequality. We'll get to that a little bit on here later. But four and one fourth, right here. If it is a fraction, make sure you add that value on there. And then I have to do two other things. I have to determine is my dot gonna be an open dot, an open circle, or is it gonna be a filled in circle? And it's completely dependent upon my sign here, right? If this is strictly less than or strictly greater than, it's gonna be an open circle. If it's got the or equal to attached, that means it includes that point. So then you fill it in. So I'm gonna have a filled in circle right here at four and one fourth. And then I have to point or shade or whatever. There's lots of different ways to do this. I've always been the kind of one that just kind of makes an arrow in the direction that it's true. How do I know which way to go? You point the way that it's true. Um, every number to the left of four and one fourth is less than four and one fourth, right? So I'm pointing where it's true. Well, how can I be sure if I'm just got a little bit of doubt? Plug a point in, plug zero in. Is zero less than or equal to four and one fourth? Yeah, so I should be pointing at zero, right? So we are. What about six? Is six less than four and one fourth? Nope. So we're not pointing towards six, okay? That's how we know. And you can plug it in here. You can plug it into the original equation too. It better work for both of them, otherwise you made an arithmetic error along the way, right? Um, what about a compound inequality? What if I have three X minus two is greater than seven or two X plus five is less than negative two? Then what do I do, right? This still falls under the category of a linear because both of the ones we're solving are linear. It's just now a compound inequality. We have two different scenarios there, don't we? We've got our compound or, and then in a minute we'll do one with an and. So I still am gonna solve each of these completely independent of each other, but then when I go to graph them on a number line, I have to actually take into consideration what that or means, okay? So let's graph this one, or solve this one. Add two, I got three x greater than nine, divide by three, I get x is greater than three, or over here, subtract five, I got two x is less than negative seven, divide by two, I get x is less than negative seven halves, which is negative three and a half, right? By the way, if I make any arithmetic errors, let me know, okay? Um, I'm human too, and sometimes that happens, just shout it out, Nelly, you divided wrong, or whatever. When I go to put this on a number line, and this is one of the reasons why I use just an arrow with your basic simple inequalities, 
because when I get to my compound inequality, I know it's got more going on. I'm gonna have to do some shading um, where these things overlap kind of stuff, right? So um, it's much easier to keep your graph clean, if you will, if you start with uh, those arrows like that, then it's not as cluttered, if you will. So one, two, three, four here, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four here. Make sure I get negative three and a half on there because that's that value. Greater than three is an open circle because it doesn't include the point three. And then I go to the right because every number to the right of three is bigger than it. Four is greater than three, five, and so forth, right? For less than negative three and a half, again, that's an open circle because it doesn't include the point it's not equal to. And I go to the left. Every number that's smaller than that um, is to the left there. Now I gotta come back. At this point, I haven't really paid any attention to the word or. I, and I really shouldn't have, other than in the back of my mind know that I gotta deal with it. But now I have to come back and deal with the word or. Or means that at least one of them has to be true. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna shade where at least one of them is true, my final shaded region. Well, here to the left, it's true because negative four is either bigger than three or smaller than negative three and a half. In the middle, I don't shade at all because none of these numbers make either of these true. And then on the right, I shade over there because every number over there is either bigger than three or smaller than negative three and a half. Just has to be one of these two things true, I shade there. This is a normal or. This is what a normal or looks like, right? Um, when we end up with a disjointed uh, final answer. It's actually called a disjunction, your normal or. That's the technical name for it. So that's what a normal or looks like. Watch out for special cases, like what if I have them both going in the same direction, right? So like if this one was going that way and that one was going that way, then I'm gonna shade differently. I still wanna do where at least one of them is true. And then watch out for where they overlap because then the whole thing is true. What if they were both going um, overlapping like this, then that the whole thing would be true because every number in the world is either smaller than three or bigger than negative three and a half. So you do have some special cases. Watch out for those, they do pop up. <clears throat> what about my other compound inequality, my and? Let's do a normal one and then again we'll talk about special cases. What if I have 2x plus 5 is greater than uh, 9 and 3x minus 4 is less than uh, 2 to 20. I'm trying to make up a problem here as I go along. 0. 0.3, how's that? Greatest number in the world anyway, you got to get it into your problem. Again, same thing we did here. I don't really care about the word in the middle until I get them solved. Then, and, and graphed, and then I gotta go back and look at that word. So in the back of my mind, I know, hey, it's compound inequality, but for now, I'm just worried about solving. So, let's subtract five. I got two x is greater than nine minus five, which is four. Divide by two, we got x is greater than two. And, over here, I add four. 3x is less than 27, which just happens to be how many World Series championships the Yankees have right now. Soon to be 28, hopefully. Divide by 3, you get x is less than 9. Okay? Again, to this point, I really haven't paid much attention to the word and. Now it's going to come into play. Let's get our graph up here. We know we need 2 on there. And we need 9 on there. Greater than two means I have an open circle again because it doesn't include the point. Greater than two is to the right. Less than nine, again, it's an open circle because I don't include the point. Less than is gonna go to the left. Now the word and is important. Now I gotta think about what does the word and mean? Where the word or meant at least one of them has to be true. And means they both have to be true. I'm only going to shade where they overlap where they are both true. So to the left of two, I'm not gonna shade because both of them aren't true over here. Zero is not greater than two and less than nine, okay? So I don't shade there. Between them, I am gonna shade because every number in here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, are both bigger than two and less than nine. So I shade in there. And then once I get to the right of nine, I don't shade anymore again because the numbers to the right of nine are not true for both of these. 10 is bigger than two, but it's not smaller than that. So again, this is your normal, quote unquote, and, okay? 
That's what your normal end looks like. Again, you have to watch out for special cases. You have to watch out for when they're both going in the same direction. You have different shading. And then you also have to watch out for when they're going in opposite directions. If I have an and, the, the graph initially looks like this one where they're going apart, the answer is no solution. Because if I said what numbers are bigger than three and smaller than bigger than three, there aren't any, none in the world. So you'd have a no solution. So you kind of got to watch out for those special cases. Those will pop up. So the college level class, you're going to see the special cases in addition to the regular one. One other thing I want to point out with these before um, we move on, I think I kind of went out of order on the slides, but that's okay, um, is that sometimes you'll see an and written in triplicate form. Or it'll look something like this. It might say 5 is less than or equal to 2x plus uh, 9 is less than 17 or something like that. Whenever it's written in this form, 100% of the time, that's an and. It will never, ever, 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 ever be an or if it's written in this form. Okay? 2x plus 9 is between 5 and 17. You can see how that is connected to my graph of my quote unquote normal and. So this, when there's no word written in a compound inequality, 100% of the time, it's going to be an and. Okay, and probably going to be a normal one. To solve it, I can pull it apart and do 5 is less than or equal to 2x plus 9 and 2x plus 9 is less than 17 and solve it exactly like we did here. Or you can just leave it in this form and solve it as is. You just gotta remember that if I'm gonna subtract nine, I gotta do it to all three parts now instead of just both parts. So I got negative four less than or equal to two x, less than uh, 17 minus nine is eight. And then divide by two, again, I just have to remember to do it to all three parts here. So I'm running out of room down here, but that's okay. Negative two less than or equal to two x, less than four, okay? Then I think, personally, it's easier to graph if it's in triplicate form because I can go right to my graph. I don't have to worry about um, arrows or anything like that. I automatically know that x is between negative two and four. At negative two, it's a solid circle because it's including that point. At four, it's an open circle because it's not. And then I just shade between. Because it's given in this form and literally you say x is between negative two and four, you know where to shade, okay? So that's kind of nice. I think it's easier that way to graph those. So, and again, this always, 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 always will be an and. So um, watch out for those, those pop up as well. Let me check the time on here. I don't wanna make it too long. We're already at 12 minutes, so we'll stop this and then we'll pick up video number two next.